good morning everyone hello thank you again for coming back to um, my channel Lones Anika with Estela a big shout out to everyone um, so I just finished filming another video and it was about the Haslam system but this video is not going to be anything to do with that um, it will be about sewing and personal motivation mainly about me on how I'm feeling right now well <clears throat> I don't even know where to start but as you all know I'm a sewer and I love I love love sewing um, but sometimes some days I don't want to deal with it most of the time I do but there are the time there are those days when I don't really want to deal with the sewing I don't know what it is in my head that that happens um so if you're like me you will relate okay so in this video I just want to talk about you know when you come into your room or how do you get back into your sewing when you don't feel like it or how do you get back into not feeling down I guess is my thing um, I don't know whether that has to do with age or not but for me it, it has been about hormonal changes I think or I'm just bipolar and don't don't really know it but anyway I'm just gonna throw things at you guys so I hope you guys you know understand what I'm planning or where I'm going I'm not going anywhere so far but I'm just gonna talk and and tell you about things that I've been doing and how and what I do to get out of certain modes <clears throat> that I dislike <clears throat> so lately um, I've been urging to be in my sewing room slash studio slash everything else and I normally like doing that in the evenings but I find that because of my age I feel like I'm I end up more tired so I lose that that mojo per se but mainly evenings is when I can sew and it's I guess it's because it's quiet it's I don't know what it is honestly but I like doing that in the evening um why do I like sewing? I don't even know why I like sewing. I as I blame it to the fact that my father was the one who used to love sewing and he had always he was always curious about anything that had to do with in the sewing world including um fixing sewing machines and you know stuff like that. Um so for you to understand I'll give you a little bit of that information. So my father was 12 when he actually got into the world of, you know, the sewing world. Um, he was, like I said, he was just 12. He ended up coming to this sewing house back in the day. And we're talking the 40s. Um, he had explained to me, my dad just already passed. So, you know, I can't ask any more questions. <laughs> if I wish I could, I couldn't. But in that time you know there were more sewing houses so you would basically come in into a tailor and they would take your measurements and you would place an order and they would make your clothes that way um, apparently there weren't that many um, stores where you would be able to buy clothes the way we do today and the volume that we do today so you would mainly either made your clothes at home yourself or you would go to a tailor or a uh, fashion house if you had money you would go to a fashion house because that means you would be um having things designed to your to fit your body and that would be for from a designer so those would make more money um if you didn't which is something that is still done today um, if you uh, didn't have that kind of money, then you would probably go to a tailor or someone who you know you would have known in your 
um, neighborhood to sew for you or for the neighborhood um, or you would just go to a school and learn take a course and you would learn how to sew patterns were available at that time so my father wanted to be a tailor so if that's how he started he went to a tailor house where he was taught how to um, get into that I'm not gonna go into details maybe some other day I will but that's how he started um, from that point on time passed he learned what he needed to learn I guess then he got married to my mother and my mother uh, story says that she had a sewing machine that wasn't working well or something broke in the house and my dad would just go on and fix it however when her sewing machine uh, whenever she would use her sewing machine the machine had some kind of noise that she said that it, it just felt like it was gonna break so my dad went ahead and got into that uh, as far as you know going through the machine mechanics and he fixed it she's like oh you know he took it apart and then he put it back together without you know he it just seemed so easy when I saw him do it that and he had never gone to school or whatever so I suggested to him well she suggested to him to learn how to fix sewing machines which then he got into that and of course all of this had to do with the fact that he had already been working for the sewing industry back home and one thing led to another um, while he was doing that he also wanted to learn how to draft patterns design and all of that stuff so he did an English course by mail because back then we didn't have internet it was all by mail so he learned that um, I was told from him by him that he learned it in English which he had no clue about English language it was something that wasn't taught back home um, by the way I'm from Nicaragua um, but he said that the graphics were so clear that he understood what he was doing so he graduated from that fashion school um, as a pattern drafting maker and designer so he knew how to draft those patterns so anyhow so I think it's in my blood that's how I ended up getting into the sewing world I am a self-taught um, I started when I was 12 and you know playing with sewing machines however I learned how to crochet and I learned how to cross stitch and embroider by hand you know all by hand of course like you normally would um, out of out of a very young age I started when I was seven getting interested in all of that and then I was hand sewing um, by by the time I turned 12 my family my father had already migrated to this country the US where he ended up getting legal documents for uh, the family which would be four of us including him and that's how I ended up coming to the United States when we got when we were here um, he had industrial sewing machines in his apartment and um, and then he also had domestic sh sewing machines which I ended up using without even asking and one day out of the blue he comes home and he finds me him and my mom they come home from work and they find me working on his industrial sewing machine um, and he was like just surprised because he thought maybe I was gonna run my fingers by using it and then I was 12 but it just seemed so easy to use it so I ended up using that and he taught me how to be careful with it but then he took me off of it and put me on a domestic sewing machine and then I just got creative he didn't really get into teaching me anything he just let me be and whenever I had a question he would answer it but I hardly ever asked questions I didn't think I was end up doing that I just I do remember that I wanted to be a fashion designer but I just probably was too young to you know I didn't even know the terminology at the time I learned that I wanted to be a fashion designer and that was the the career I wanted to pursue it wasn't until I was in uh, junior high coming to high school I had a I did take a class in home economics when I was 13 going on 14 where I was taught how to use a sewing pattern 
um, well, let's say that I was introduced into sewing patterns then. Was I taught? Not really. My poor teacher was more interested in, you know, teaching those that already knew how to use them rather than those of us that were just starting. Um, so, let's say I self I self taught how to use a sewing pattern by making a bunch of mistakes and and that's the beginning of my sewing journey at age 12. Then from that point on I didn't do much with that. I remember making a pillow and a few other things and then I got cut up with other things as a teenager would and didn't pick up sewing it wasn't until I was picked sewing back until I was I believe 19 and then from that point on I haven't stopped sewing and I'm 48 today so it's been a long journey I've learned a lot I've gone through different phases but never ha I have never given up um, I may put it down for a few days even months but then I come back to it so I've tried giving it up and I just don't see it in my life doing that so um yeah that's that um at some point in my life and that wasn't that lo not too long ago I had an alteration shop where I worked for nine years ten actually no I did that for six years and five years and five years I started doing that five years prior to going out into the public and it wasn't until after recession because that's how I started sewing as a business. Prior to that I used to work in a bank so I used to make my own clothes so I would go to work, come home, do my thing and then I would make the time to sit in my sewing in my sewing room which at the time was in my garage and and so and that was like my unwinding place. I all my stress was just when I was sewing it was just relief and then once I felt tired I would go to bed and sleep and I just felt like I just felt like that was how I would I was able to unwind any frustrations I had it was focusing and sewing so yes if you have any frustrations and you want to use your sewing for that go for it um, if at some point you feel like you're frustrated when sewing I say drop it, leave it alone for a day or two, and then go back to it so you can find your way back to it. Um, so you won't have to hate it. Um, but yeah, sewing has been, to me, my heaven in haven. So, um... Now I'm at that point where I want to learn how to do my own patterns and I want to be able to design and make my own, make patterns to sell patterns. But that's going to take another year probably since I'm planning on, I was supposed to start uh, a class this fall semester that's uh, fashion designing, um, no, it's pattern making and designing. It's a certification that I want to get. Um, not looking forward to doing fashion designing. I think everything I do pertains to that and I'm not planning to work for anybody so don't really need a title for that but I do want to have enough knowledge as far as um, pattern making, drafting patterns, making patterns, designing patterns and you know and such. I think that would complete my happiness as far as sewing uh, techniques and you know just to complete the whole thing um, but other than that there's a lot more to learn that I feel like I'm gonna be learning I love to con you know I love to put a lot of uh, what do you call um, goals and I like challenges and I like getting to a point where I feel like okay I did it now what you know it's one of those things like when you make something for someone and you know they see a huge thing and it's a big deal and to me it's just I did it 
<laughs> I don't like bragging about it. I just make it and I do share it in some groups and you know and just to see the feedback how people feels about it but you know I don't like feeling like God I just like knowing that I did something and and it gives if I feel happy to see that whatever I made made someone else happy so just like when I when I teach someone and when I'm sharing something with someone and that you know and whomever is watching comments or just lets me know how they're happy to have found me or they're happy that I share this that is like a high for me I love doing that I love being able to share I love being able to teach someone something new or just help them get out of anything they're stuck in and you know things like that it's really really huge for me it's the biggest accomplishment that I can have is to be able to have someone learn from something I probably made a mistake on and I'm trying to show okay if you make this mistake this is how I came out of it and this is how I fixed it or you know things like that um, I'm, I know I'm all over the place right now but I'm just trying to like get things sorted out on my own and when I'm doing this I normally just film and listen to it on my own but this time I decided to just share it with you guys and you know see how you all feel about it and maybe help someone else with how with my talk my blog or my venting all right so the other thing you know and that's that but the other thing I wanted to talk about is you know um, and that's something I talked about in the previous video I made in the Haslam uh, for the Haslam uh, sewers and it's age appropriate garments. I think the terminology or the term for age appropriate is wrong. Um, only because it makes it it makes it feel like because you're a certain age you can't wear this or you can't wear that. And so I think that terminology is wrong. It shouldn't even exist, but I guess we love putting labels to everything. But anyway. I want to talk about the fact that when I was young, I was able to wear a lot of different things because I was thin and young and everything was in its place. You know how it is. But then, you know, life moves. You go on in life and you start getting older and you don't have the same feeling for the wear that's on fashion or on style at the moment. And you want to still look good and still look your best and feel good about it. But I don't understand why at some point there isn't fashion for a certain age group. Or I, I, I mean, I feel that way. I don't know about you guys, but I feel that way. I feel like once you hit 30, between the 30s and your 50s, there aren't garments where you can identify yourself at least for me where i was able to identify myself at my age and feel comfortable and feel sexy and classy and you know and everything else where i would be able to like hide something that i wanted to hide from my body because i was concerned at that time you know and things like that i don't feel that way anymore i learned to love myself and I love all of me, whichever way I am. So I don't feel that way. However, it does. that doesn't mean that I don't want to look my best. Yes, I want to look my best. Yes, especially when you go out, you know. I don't know, that's maybe just a Latina thing or it's just in me. I don't know what it is. But when I do go out, I want to look my best because I feel good when I do that. And I don't want to look, I don't want to look wrong and I don't care, you know, how other people, when they look at me, what they look. I think I don't care, but maybe I do. I'm not sure. Um, I guess from the moment that I started to learn to love myself the way I am physically and everything else, I decided not to pay attention which I don't even think I ever did pay attention to how what people felt on how I dressed. Um, of course, you feel happy when people tell you, you know, like, 
wow, I like what you're wearing. Where did you get it? And blah, blah, blah. And most of the time when I go out, I wear things that I make. Um, so I have to say, you know, like, oh, I made it. Oh, can you make one for me? And that's when you're like, uh, I'll let you know. But anyway, going back to the age-appropriate fashion, I remember I wasn't able to find anything that would make me happy, not let alone vintage. You know, when you find garments out there that are vintage, the, you know, they're so slim, you know, and I was never slim. I mean, I was only slim when I was a teenager. Then after that, when I started popping kids, you know, my body completely changed. And I have a belly, and I have hips, and I have a butt, and thick thighs, and, you know, and I was, after that, I always had meat on my bones. So I couldn't find clothing that would be my age where I was able to maybe hide those parts of my body that I was highly, you know, concerned about and it, it's usually it had usually been my belly everything else i didn't really care about my belly was that part where i always needed to hide and felt the necessity to hide and i couldn't really find clothes that was in my age group i had to go into the ladies group which at that age you're thinking you know i don't want to go to the department store and find myself buying clothes from someone who's in their 60s or their 50s because I don't feel that age or I just don't feel that old to wear that now that I'm 48 I still feel that way I still feel like why our clothes at our age has to look so old you know like a very old fashion I do get that we want to be comfortable I get that very much but we also want to look good we also want to look classy and sexy and you know and everything else um but we don't want to look young either we don't want to look like okay i'm 15. uh-uh i don't want to look 15 i don't want to look 18. not even close to 21 like i'm clubbing all the time nope i want to look my age but i want to look my age in a classy comfortable sexy way where I'm comfortable where I feel like a like a big ass diva and you know and, and of course like I said I don't care what other people think but there wasn't and there isn't so that brings me to that point where I am blessed that I know how to sew because I can make my own things and I can make myself look good with my own you know within the skills that I know but not everyone can say that. Not everyone is able to say that. Not everyone is able to say that they're happy and content with how they look or how they feel. Um, it is a process. It's, it takes time to get to this point. Um, and I just feel like I put a blank. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, if you're in that situation, you know, um, bring yourself back up you know you're you're just as beautiful and as smart and as you know young as you feel so bring yourself back up okay don't don't put yourself down for any reason learn to love yourself learn to live happy with whom you are and how you are you know because that projects that when you do that that projects and that's what people see people will see how you feel what you see in front of the mirror is what you project. So if when you get up in the morning, um, you feel down, then don't look at yourself in the mirror. Give yourself a couple minutes, get in the shower, and bring yourself back up. If you need a minute to cry, then cry. If you need a minute to like unwind, then unwind. I mean, women, that's how we are. We don't even know why that happens. We don't even know why our hormones are that way. But it does happen. But start loving yourself. If you already do, then kudos for you. Big thumbs up. If you don't, then start learning yourself. We go through a lot. We go As women, we go through so much. You know, there's just a bundle of things we think about and a bundle of things we don't think about. And, you know, it's just part of who we are as women. Um, in fashion unfortunately is part of our life is part of 
how we feel. We project through our fashion on how we dress, you know, basically. And yes, we love looking at ourselves in the mirror and feeling good. So if you're at that point and you feel like what you're wearing is not what you want, then I suggest you start really, really looking into getting those things that really make you happy without breaking your back, of course. Um, but don't be buying things that you don't like, you know. If you're a sewer, then sew things that make you happy, not what makes other people happy. Um, you know, um, you're the only person who's going to be wearing that, so be sure that whatever you want to make, it's, it's going to make you happy. It's going to make you happy wearing it, and it's going to make you happy, you know, that you made something for you. You know, don't care about other people. How are they going to think about, oh, I chose this color, this fabric, whatever, you know. Just go with it. Go if that's what's going to make you happy. I trust me that it's how you project what people are going to see, not what you think they're going to see, you know. The less you care on how people will think of you is the part that is most important because now you're going to focus your you you're going to focus you and you you're going to be investing in you you're going to be investing on what makes you happy on how it makes you happier where can you you know how many steps is going to take you to get you there you know and that only happens when you start when you start thinking okay you know what i can do this and i can make myself happy no one else will trust me um Everything in life is just a spare of the moment and it stays in our brain and it's 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 that part where if you were happy for a minute it's gas to make you happy for a month if you guys understand that. Um but we're the only ones who can control making ourselves happy with however in whichever way we can without harming anyone. So that was like crazy guys. Sorry. I think I've like yield out of the way <laughs> from the sewing but to me that's what it is that's what sewing is to me it's making me happy putting me in a position where I make others happy putting me in a position where um, I can show others maybe things that they're very not big but for others it changes the world and it changes my world as well it just motivates me to do things that help others so yeah this was a motivational video for you guys um so um with all that said i think i said enough um i normally tell you know say in my videos oh i'm gonna be doing this I realize now that I don't really have the time to promise anything. The only thing I can tell you is thank you for watching my videos and staying tuned. And please continue to do that. Give, give my videos a thumbs up. Click on that bell and subscribe. And really get to know what I do and share. Um, hopefully, any you know, the things that I'm doing in my videos can help you. I do speak Spanish and I don't really do that many in Spanish but if you wish me to do that then please let me know I will go ahead and you know and talk about it why haven't I done that many in Spanish I'm not sure why honestly I probably haven't found my mojo for the Spanish viewers um, but maybe I should it's not a, that I'm discriminating it's just I feel more comfortable when I speak in English since um, I've been in this country long enough in the U.S. for over 35 years. I start, you know, I came to this country when I was just 11 and I'm 48 now, so you guys do the math. Um, but I feel very comfortable. Unfortunately, uh, Spanish is my first language, but I haven't, I don't really practice it the same way I do English, although, although you guys will probably pick up accent um, when I'm speaking but if you don't then that's cool anyhow um, enough of that um, I do have a Facebook group called so classy and creative so if you'd like to join just go ahead and do that I will leave the link down below 
um, there are other videos that you guys can actually watch um, I do not edit my videos I feel like raw videos coming from my part is really what some of my viewers like um, the fact that I don't have to edit anything if I you know at some point when I'm doing something I end up making a mistake then you can see me on doing you know fixing that mistake and that's okay by me um, my only thing is I worry if my videos are too long but I try not to but if I do then if that's something that you need you know someone who you can watch um, doing something in a long video but it's giving you the step by step with and without mistakes then that's probably that that person would probably be me so if you do like that then stay I do make lives from time to time on my Facebook group which I said is so classy and creative and again I'm gonna leave the link down below so you guys can get it um, I tried different type of sewings you know now I'm gonna talk about that part before I let you guys go I tried different types of sewing I use a um, um, I'm not gonna go into details on what type of sewings but I do try different things um, I use a Juki DDL 227 industrial sewing machine so if you do not have an industrial sewing machine I'm sorry I do have domestic sewing machines but because I like doing things fast and that machine you know is the one that I use most of the time I also use the dummy or the mannequin behind me which is my twin so I won't have to be trying things on um, I had to like if you can see that mannequin you can actually see that um, I actually went ahead and um, I kind of like molded a little bit to my body type because mannequins don't have any kind of volume other than a mannequin shape which is very blunt okay but you have that option where you can actually mold the the um the mannequin to your body shape and that's what i ended up doing so that's why i call it my twin it's a little bigger than what i am um only because i've lost a few inches and sorry but i'm happy because using it and I haven't updated anything about it because I do sometimes from time to time I gain water gain I do have I retain fluids on my body so I gain uh, weight like water weight so I don't like you know making my garments too tight on me I like them to flow a little more and and that I can have room for extra an extra inch or two if I need it um so yeah that's where i'm at um again you know if you have any questions if there's something you need me to talk about please go ahead and leave it down in the comments um i hope you like this video i hope um whatever i talked about today is of your liking and if you want more motivational videos from my part any subject you want me to talk about um, I will try and hit that mode. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again for watching me. My name is Estela and this is Leonesa Nika. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.